Last week, um, I started preaching through Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7, and uh, I want to continue. Didn't say much about this letter, so I'll say uh, this morning, the letter was written by Paul um, to the churches in Galatia. Okay, verse 1, Paul, an apostle, so it tells us in verse 2, and to all the brethren with their which are with me under the churches of Galatia. So he's not writing to a particular church. He's writing to churches in an area. And the area is Galatia. Who knows where Galatia was? Well, pretty much you're going to have two, two really choices of countries. Uh, most of it, uh, it's either going to be in what two countries mainly, not... Not Israel, and not Italy. Turkey and Corinth was in Greece, and so so you got Turkey and Greece. Which country is are the is the area of Galatia in? No one wants to guess. Turkey. Now, if you look at the map, imagine this is a map, and you have the Mediterranean Sea. You know where Cyprus is? It's, it's kind of like at the far end of, of, of uh, the Mediterranean. And if you go directly up um, to, to Turkey, and kind of like in the middle of Turkey, that's the area of Galatia. Uh, now this church uh, was made up of both, uh, sorry, this church, these churches were made up of both uh, uh, believers from the background of being Jewish, and also Gentiles. But they had a, a, a major false teaching coming into the church that you're saved by grace, but you're kept by your good works. And this was a, a, a false gospel. Look at chapter 1, verse 1. Sorry, verse 6. Paul says, under the inspiration of God, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And this is very true today. There are so many people perverting the gospel of Christ. They're twisting it and and this was a real problem. And these people have been tricked by these false preachers. In chapter 3, verse 1, it says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that should, you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? And uh, he says, This only would I, I, would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So did you get... Did you get the Holy Spirit indwelling you by doing good works? No. You got it by faith. And this is, uh, this is the problem. They, they, they thought that, that they uh, uh, were going to just keep it by good works. And, and that does away with faith and grace. And so it's a terrible, terrible doctrine. And it's, it's not a, a, another gospel. It's no gospel at all. The gospel is good news. What good news is it if I said to you, you've got to work 40 hours a week every week for the rest of your life to stay saved? Would that be good news? What if I said to you, you've got to work 60 hours a week to stay saved? Would, would that be? There's nothing you could do. Not many hours. Or, it's not good news at all. It's, 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 uh, uh, which is not another, but there's some be that trouble you. Now verse 8, but though we or an angel from heaven preach unto you any other gospel than that which ye have, we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. People get offended when you uh, reveal false teachers. Paul said, uh, by, by inspiration of God, these false teachers should be accursed. It's a horrible, wicked thing. And so um, these false doctrines take, uh, these false teachers and these false doctrines take away your spiritual joy and peace and even lead to wrong living. And false doctrine does, does that. So it's very important that we have sound biblical doctrine because it leads us to a closer walk with God. 
uh, fellowship with God and fellowship with each other and uh, joy. Now, I'm going to read you Fawcett, uh, and he gives a really good summary of why uh, this letter was been was inspired. Now, understand this. This letter is, is under inspiration of God. It's a letter of stern rebuke, but of love and compassion. You do not rebuke somebody because you don't love them. If uh, Listen, if I see somebody uh, walking down the street, drinking out of a whiskey bottle and smoking cigarettes, I'm not going to say anything to them. <laughs> Why? I'm good well, no, no, not even that. But you know, I don't really know the person. I don't have any contact with them. But if I saw my wife walking down the street drinking a whiskey bottle and smoking a cigarette, I say, "Dear, you're ruining your life, right?" Yeah. And I say, "That's terrible." That rebuke. Why would I do it? Because I love her. And that is why Paul, under the inspiration of God, is writing because he loves them. Okay, so Paul in this letter maintains his apostolic authority. Second of all, it's to counteract the Judaizers and show that their teaching undermined Christianity itself by lowering its spirituality to external ceremonialism. By doing things. And then to strengthen Galatian believers in faith and towards Christ and the, in the fruit of the Spirit. So last week, I covered verse 4 about how Jesus Christ gave himself uh, uh, no, sorry, wrong chapter. No wonder this is. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. So I covered that last week. If you didn't listen to the sermon, I, I would encourage you. It's on YouTube. It'll really help you grow spiritually. Now, we're on to verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So I'm going to talk about the redemption today. To redeem them that were under the law. The meaning of redeem means to purchase back, to ransom, to liberate or rescue from captivity or bondage. Okay? To, to, to rescue from captivity or bondage. Uh, or from any other obligation or liability to be suffer or to be forfeited by paying an equivalent. So redemption, somebody is forfeited something and somebody pays the equivalent to, to redeem them, uh, to repurchase what was sold, to regain possession of an alienated thing by repaying the value to its possessor. Notice redemption requires a payment of equivalent. So uh, I'm going to talk about that la later, but it's right in the definition. Uh, by paying an equivalent. Well, let me ask you a question. Did the law pay anything for your sins? No. So how can the law save you? It can't. By keeping the law, the keeping the law didn't uh, pay anything to, 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 uh, to free me. It didn't do anything, did it? Just that alone shows that salvation has to be by grace through faith is a gift of God. And so they needed to be redeemed. And keeping the law could not redeem him. And this really refutes the doctrine that, that you're saved by works and that you're kept by works. Because you are redeemed. Everyone's guilty. Everyone deserves judgment. And everybody needs to be redeemed. You know, two weeks ago on the doors... Uh, and then again, yesterday, I had people telling me they were going to go to heaven because they're a good person. And why am I good? Well, I keep the law. I, do, I, I, I don't break the law. <laughs> You're wrong. You do break the law. And I tell them that. Uh, I said, well, how good are you? Oh, I'm, I, I, I said, well, did you ever lie and steal? Yeah, but I don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You broke the law. You need to be redeemed. That's why God says, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. We're all sinners. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, payment of equivalent has to be made. What can pay for my sin? What is equivalent to my sin? What is equivalent to your sin? Well, good works aren't equivalent. Um, 
Sam, I come and, and, and while you're away and I steal everything from your house and, 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 and I wreck it and I ruin it and I come back and I say, well, I, but I can't sell them 100 euros. Is that equivalent? No, it's, it's not going to satisfy your justice, right? The equivalent has to satisfy the justice of God. What is going to satisfy the justice of God? Well, God is perfectly holy and perfectly pure. So whatever it is that's going to satisfy his justice to redeem me has to be perfectly holy and perfectly pure, right? Well, that's where grace comes in. Uh, and what, what happened? The blood of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Please turn there. In whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So we have redemption through his blood. So the answer is, uh, what is sufficient to redeem me? Blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. That's it. And that only is it. And, and, and the Galatians were, were making light of the blood of Christ by thinking that they're going to keep saved by their good works. That is not going to, to do it. And, 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 and go to Galatians chapter 5. It has to be accepted as the equivalent. We talked uh, last week, and I used the illustration, if I, I drove into Priscilla's car and, and I smashed it, and I said, would you take 200 euros? And you said what? No. I say, I'll give you 200 thousand euros she say no but I, I say i'll give you twenty thousand euros will you accept that she, would you be happy with that she'd be very happy with that she'd be driving a bmw next right maybe not a bmw but uh, nicer a newer car anyways so it has to be accepted it has to be equivalent and it has to be accepted now let's look at ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 and walk in love as christ also hath loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. The offering was a sweet-smelling savor to God. That means that God found it acceptable and he liked it, right? It was his sufficient. The Bible, again, says it in another way in Colossians 1, verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of Sins. My sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ because that was sufficient for my redemption. Look at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 13. That's wrong. Verse, Hebrews 1, verse 3. Uh, well, I'll start at the start of it. Verse 1. God, who at sundry times in diverse manners. What's sundry times mean? Different. Different. Okay. God, who at sundry times in different manners sorry, diverse manners, which is different again, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hast in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Now, verse 13, uh, verse 3, sorry. Talking about the Son, who being the brightness of his glory, in the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he hath by, by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus Christ purged our sins by himself. It is a finished work. And when on the cross, he said, it is finished. And what did he do in this verse? He sat down. We sit down when the job's done, right? It's done. It's done. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, 9, verse 12.
neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Obtained. Past, present, or future. Past. He's obtained it already. It's done. It's finished. The price is paid. It's paid in full. Isn't that wonderful? Having obtained eternal redemption. So the price, I, I said, had to be a, a, of equivalent. And the blood of Jesus Christ was enough to cover every sin of every person that ever lived. Because it is the Son of God. God the Son shed his blood. It's a perfect sacrifice. Look at 1 Peter. Chapter 1. Verses 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. So you weren't redeemed by corruptible things. Silver can't redeem you. Gold can't redeem you. Good works can't redeem you. The law can't redeem you. Well, what can? Verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We sing that song, redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The, the price was paid. You know, redeemed is very much like ransom. The Bible says, Matthew 20, 28, does anybody know it? Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to for many. Excellent. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus Christ gave himself a ransom. Now a ransom is a little bit different because the ransom uh, frees somebody. Okay? But it's very, very close. Uh, what's the biggest ransom ever paid? Okay, <laughs> on earth, I'm going to talk about Jesus Christ in a second. Uh, physically, it was uh, uh, um, paid to the uh, conquistador Francis Pizarro. In 1533, uh, the uh, um, <clears throat> Incas paid this conquistador a, a haul half full of gold and silver for their uh, Emperor uh, Apathathula, huh. obviously pronounced it wrong, but they paid uh, a room full of half gold and silver. It's uh, worth equivalent uh, uh, of today uh, more than uh, one and a half billion, probably two billion euros. But that was nothing, like Sam said, compared to the price was paid that the creator of all this universe came lived a sinless son as the son of God and shed his blood. That is far, far greater. Now let's go back to Galatians. From Galatians. To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of, of sons. The price that Jesus Christ paid was his suffering shed blood for us. Galatians 3.13 Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, as it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The law brought a curse. That curse is guilty. The law says to you you're guilty. The law says to you you're guilty. The law says to you and you and you and you. Guilty. That's a curse. I don't want to be held guilty. Amen? Amen. I want forgiveness. I want redemption. And Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. And the Galatians are trying to keep the law and saying it's going to, to save us and keep us saved. That's ridiculous. And, and, and it's, a, a, it's blasphemous against the blood of Christ and the work of Jesus Christ. And now, I want you to look at this here. Go back to our checks verse. 
to redeem that under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons. So un, we were under the law. Remember that verse 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Jesus kept the law in full. He didn't come to, to destroy the law, but to what? Fulfill it, is what it says. He came to fulfill the law. And so he, Jesus Christ had to come under the law so that he could keep the law, so he could pay in full for our sins. And it is finished. In, in uh, John 19, verse 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. What is finished? The payment is paid. You could stamp it, paid in full. It's done. It's finished. Imagine for a moment, I go to the Louvre, Where's that? Paris, France. And in there they have uh, the Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa is probably the uh, most expensive painting in the world. Uh, in 1962 they insured it for 100 million American dollars. Uh, probably with inflation that's probably like a billion today. So imagine I go to, and, and there's the Mona Lisa, and I take it down and I get my paintbrush that's out, and they say, well, really, do you ever see the Mona Lisa? She's got no eyebrows. Did you ever notice that? Yeah. I say, I'm going to fix this up. I'm going to paint some eyebrows in it. And my wife said, what are you going to do? You going to watch me paint the eyebrows in? No. No, what are you going to do? <laughs> Stop it! Why? Not meant to do it. Why? That's the way she is. That's the way she is, but... That's a masterpiece. And anything I add to the masterpiece is going to ruin it. When you try to add to the work of Christ, you're actually ruining your own salvation. I mean, imagine me trying to, to, to fix up the, the Mona Lisa. And the only reason I would want to fix it up is because I don't appreciate it, right? Why people want to add the work of Christ is they don't appreciate the work of Christ. That's, that's simply it. They don't see the value. It's a finished work. You can't add to it. It's a perfect work. So Galatians 4 verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. We were under the law. We are all under God's law in the sense that we have to keep it. Now, I don't keep it to get saved, but I'm under the law. God still wants me to honor thy father and thy mother. Amen? God still doesn't want me to steal and covet. Uh, the only law that's not um, reiterated in the New Testament is what? Of the, of the Ten Commandments. Which, which one's not told us in the New Testament? Remember the Sabbath. Because we don't worship on the Sabbath. We worship on the first day of the week to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it is finished. Amen? I am redeemed from the curse of the law. And we are under the law. Everyone, the, the, the law says to everyone, you are guilty. Look at Galatians chapter 3. Paul's already covered this in verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. The schoolmaster, the law is there to say, you are guilty. The law teaches me. That's what a schoolmaster does, right? Teaches you. Well, thou shalt not covet teaches me that I have coveted. Thou shalt not bear false witness teaches me, hey, you've lied. And it teaches me that I am guilty. And it teaches me that God is perfectly holy. And it teaches me that a perfectly holy God sees that I am guilty. And a perfectly holy God deserves uh, uh, judgment. So uh, the law is teaching me. That, and and, and uh, for the, the Galatians to think that somehow keeping the law, whether it's a ceremonial law or the moral law, the moral law would be the Ten Commandments and the ceremonial law would be all the other. Uh, they can't save anybody. 
And it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's blasphemous to be teaching that. To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Just lost my place. I don't know what happens. I touch this and it goes. That we might receive. Notice how do we get the adoption? Okay, but what's the word in there? We need to receive it. So it can be offered, but I have to what? Receive it. Jesus Christ's death was sufficient for all, but everybody don't, doesn't get it. Everybody has to first what? Receive it. You can't be saved without receiving it. John 1 verse 12, But as many as received him, to, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I received Jesus Christ by faith. Well, people say, well, I, but I receive him by, by uh, getting baptized. No, you don't. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe. Receive by believing. And people are saying, well, I received Jesus by, by taking a wafer. I mean, uh, uh, so many people today will, will take that wafer in the Mass and think, I've received Christ. No, you haven't. You've received a little wafer of, uh, of uh, bread. We receive him even to them that believe. So I receive him by faith. I, what do I receive? How do, what do I believe? I believe that Jesus Christ's death, uh, 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 suffering and death and, and resurrection were sufficient for my sins. Because God the Father said they were sufficient. He says, I will accept this payment. But I have to receive it. This is the most interesting thing. I didn't realize this. Who is Andrew Jackson? He was an American president. And during his uh, presidency, there's a guy named George Wilson. He was a postal clerk, and, but he, and he robbed a, 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 a payroll on a train. But in the process, he killed somebody. And the, the court uh, convicted him and sentenced him to be hanged. Public sentiment was starting to turn against capital punishment, and so they they got a, a movement together to to get president uh, the the president to uh, to pardon Wilson. This was the first crime he'd ever got caught. Probably not the first ever he done. First one he ever got caught, and eventually uh, President Jackson intervened and gave Wilson a pardon. You know what Wilson did? He refused to take the pardon. They didn't know what to do. Uh, this is the first time, <coughs> the first time it ever happened. The president gives a pardon, and, and the person says, "I don't want the pardon." So, the Supreme Court was asked to rule: Could somebody indeed refuse a presidential pardon? Chief Justice John Marshall handed down the court's decision. Listen, we already wrote. A pardon is a parchment whose only value must be determined by the receiver of the pardon. It has no value apart from which the receiver gives to it. George Wilson has refused to accept the pardon. We cannot conceive why he would do it, but he has. Therefore, George Wilson must die. And George Wilson, as punishment, was hung. The payment... He wouldn't take the pardon, so he had to take the payment. And as many as received him, we received Jesus Christ by faith, and we received the adoption of sons. To redeem them under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. The law could not make you adopted. And the law says you're, you're not God's child because you rejected him. The law says you're guilty. But by faith, we receive Jesus Christ and we are adopted. Therefore, until you're saved, you are not a child of God. People think, well, there is a sense that we're all children of God by creation. There's no doubt about that. But spiritually, you only become a child of God when you are born again. 
That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. Nicodemus, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. You can't get to heaven any other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So it says in John 1, verse 12 and 13, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. God gives the new birth when you receive by faith the redemption that Jesus Christ offered. I'll tell you what, I am so thrilled that it, at 17 years old, I heard that good news. And uh, this is a simple m message, but it's a very deep thing that we were redeemed. We are under the law, condemned. But Jesus Christ shed his blood, and it was sufficient. It was sufficient, and it still is. And it saved me, and I don't need to do anything else. What a wonderful thing. So it was a terrible, terrible false doctrine that was being taught. And it, this doctrine that you are kept by the works of the law, or, or, or you'll lose your salvation if you don't do certain things, or if you do certain things, you'll lose it. You know what that is? That is an attack on the person and work of Jesus Christ. Because it says what Jesus Christ is, did is not sufficient. And so uh, Paul, very rightly, by inspiration of God, says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach unto you any other gospel, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which have preached un we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. This is a wicked, wicked doctrine. And uh, I just praise God for, for the redemption I have in Jesus Christ. And I hope this is just a, meant to encourage us what Jesus Christ has done for us. And I'm certainly encouraged by it. Let's close in a word of prayer.